Cartel.ai is revolutionizing the film and TV industry with its human-centric AI platform. Join us today to discuss the company's innovative approach and vision is Ben Cusin, co-founder and chief strategy officer at Cartel.ai. Ben, thanks a lot for being here. Thanks so much for having me. So let's start with a bit of an overview for Cartel for any of our viewers who might be a bit unfamiliar in. How do you see the company's vision right now in the broader entertainment landscape? Sure. Uh, the introduction of AI tools has really disrupted how media is produced and created. Uh, just nine months ago, uh, almost a year ago, you saw tools come out. And if you remember Will Smith eating spaghetti, it looked very old school, very, ah, uh, this is a joke, it's not going to go anywhere fast. And lo and behold, it, it did. And we're on a path right now where AI produced media is going to be near fidelity with live shot uh, media. So uh, our job is finding the best talent in the world and making it easy for brands and agencies and businesses to be able to access this level of production. Uh, it's faster, it's more affordable, uh, with limitless creative, because you can do things with AI that you can't with traditional uh, production methods. Uh, we've had uh, an interesting number of IPOs here at the New York Stock Exchange. A company called Mountain comes to mind that is sort of taking the, the sort of art and, and entertainment ecosystem that used to be so unattainable, so convoluted and complicated and expensive and has really narrowed this down. I really view that as kind of a sweet spot of your company. Talk to me more about the ways that you see you're able to disrupt traditional TV and film production. Sure, so when you think about it, there are 400,000 uh, ad agencies, roughly 450,000 across the world. All of them have employed for media production, for commercials, traditional methods, you gotta go out and shoot. They're like six week timelines, up to three months, maybe even four months. Now you can create a Super Bowl caliber commercial in a week or two. Uh, and understanding that, understanding the workflows, it's what we do as a business. We give one single touch point. We have producers in-house who work directly with brands and agencies. Think of it like an Intel inside. You don't necessarily see us, but we're powering your media production. And what it really does is democratize uh, incredible AAA creative for brands and businesses who couldn't historically afford it. So now what we're gonna see, we're gonna see smaller businesses who have these beautiful uh, products, concepts, services that are now able to articulate that using AI-powered media. For us, though, it's all about the human layer. Many companies are out there trying to automate uh, creativity, and that's quite simply not what we do. We are years and years and years away from AI just autonomously creating an original idea, an original commercial, shooting it, assembling it, et cetera. It's just not how it works. So for us, we're a hybrid old school, new school. We have a lot of talent who used to work in the ad industry, came from Hollywood, but understand, grasp, and really master those AI tools. Uh, and now the combination of those can create really incredible, high converting, powerful media. And that's what we specialize in. Yeah, why do you feel it's important to still maintain the human powered AI components of your conversation? Sure, I think there's an existential uh, movement that humans have to understand is AI is going to get more powerful. We always have to understand the human layer. It's very important to protect humanity, protect creativity in this whole process. Um, it's very hard to transfer the nuanced knowledge of what creative looks like. Shot selection, cinematography, scripting, those are all inherently human facets that come out of human creativity. So in order to prevent really a, a surge of just AI slop out there where everything just leads together, it's not innovative, it's not creative, you need humans who have discretion, who have taste, who have a history in telling stories. For us, it's really about story-driven narratives. And that's an inherently human trait we believe in. We will always have humans at, at the forefront of AI and using AI in that way. Who are some of the notable partnerships that Cartel has built alongside, has forged a one-on-one -on -one with uh, in terms of agencies or movie studios or big power players in the entertainment ecosystem? Sure. So given we're Intel inside and our clients are typically agencies that work with the brands, we try to stay a little more under the hood, but we are working with one of the biggest TV networks, one of the biggest movie studios. Uh, we've got about 16 agencies that we're working with right now and our list keeps growing. We have about 100 opportunities in, uh, in our pipeline and we've only been in business less than two months. So uh, there's clearly demand out there. Uh, it's our job to really grow and service it. Uh, as you imagine, everyone wants high quality media, whether you're an individual, a company, an agency, uh, a brand, and, and knowing that AI is out there, obviously you have your Figma IPO today, that's an AI powered design company. Uh, you see the demand, I think it's, it's about to run 3X from uh, where the IPO is. Uh, there's a lot of demand for that out there, so we want to service it in a professional, high quality manner. 
what has the response been like in your early days from other industry professionals? Because I got to imagine you're operating in a space where everyone has come of age under what we, I guess we now call kind of the old school way of doing things, even though by old school, I mean like, I don't know where we were six months ago, but the rules of the road are, are evolving and changing just that quickly. And I wonder what does that feedback look like for you and your colleagues in real time? Yeah, there's, there's a saying, there are weeks and months when years happen, and it feels like an AI that's uh, about every single week or month, because uh, there's new tools, new techniques, and new pipelines that pop up. Um, it's really been fascinating. It's a little bit of cognitive dissonance mixed with shock and awe and surprise and excitement, because we're able to deliver a piece of media that the human mind didn't really understand is possible uh, in you know days. And when you come from an industry where things take forever and you kind of in your mind have been condi uh, conditioned like a Pavlovian style to say, okay, we're doing a commercial. In my mind, that's about three months. And we're giving it to you in a week. There's just this, this stare like, how did you do that? Um, and I want more. And so really that's been the response is, is just getting a chance to show them what's possible. And that of course converts into to longer relationships, which we're excited about. Yeah, Ben, you mentioned earlier in our conversation, you still see it being years and years away from AI being, I guess you'd say kind of fully agentic artificial intelligence for the world of entertainment, a, a mechanism that can really uh, can create, can produce, can self-edit, can self-release, can really do all of this virtually without humans. But talk to me about even maybe shorter term, let's say the next two to three years or so, where do you see or where do you hope the underlying technology continues to evolve to? Sure, so it's pretty much our philosophy here that uh, AI is on a pace to AGI, which is artificial general intelligence, and then ultimately ASI, which is super intelligence. And kind of to your point, when uh, we have AI that can create an original script, uh, put it together, you know, generate the media, assemble it, and make it a high converting asset unto itself, I don't think we're going to be having conversations about our company or the value of our company, but much more existential about humanity and our pact with the machines. So putting that aside for a bit, I think in the short term, what we want to see is continued growth. We're having um, a lot of things that were in VFX pipelines, big logo animations, explosions, really cool transitions, and cinematography really becoming better and better. Um, we would love to see more of the controls, the so things that a DP does or things that a director does happen in, in post, later on in the edit. I think what we're the most excited about is really a hybrid performance, so we capture human performance and then generate the asset around that. We have a studio in Santa Monica where we have a volumetric capture setup where we come in and two actors, an actor, a group can go in and perform a scene. Whereas normally you need to shoot, light, have camera movements, all that happens now in post. So what we love to see is really the old world coming to and meeting in the middle with these AI tools to create really, really powerful narrative storytelling. It's an awesome moment for the underlying technology, there's no doubt, and I love having conversations with people like yourself that are right at the forefront to take a, a landscape and an ecosystem and an environment that users are really familiar with and now saying, hey, just you wait to see what we can do in the future. Ben Cusin, co-founder, chief strategy officer at Cartel AI. Ben, thanks for being here, congratulations. Thanks so much for having me.